This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless Say Trading Frank. It's approximately 8.38 p.m. on January 26, 2020. Welcome. Very monumental night tonight with uh, 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 our deepest uh, condolences and, and heartfelt sorrow for the tragedy with uh, Kobe, Kobe Bryant um, and his passing. And of course, all the other stuff that's happening around the world. This is a live strategic session, weekend webinar like you always do. Full disclosure, this is purely for financial education and not for any solicitation or advice. This session will be recorded and uploaded to YouTube, Clueless we'll 8, 8 Trading YouTube channel for further viewing by all other members and anyone out there with the internet connection who wants to really understand the realities of the market, the facts, not the fiction, as we like to say and some predictive forecast and a couple of uh, couple of very smart predictive analytics as to um, what both the upside and the downside in the markets uh, can be and we're going to talk about that tonight we also have an instagram channel please follow us there uh, during the week uh, we go ahead and post some of the highlights of our options trades specifically the charts and uh, they're certainly a valuable resource on that note welcome and begin and uh, we shall begin all right so let's try to keep this concise we have futures down roughly about 27 points and at 6 p.m when the globex futures started trading we were down i believe 32 maybe a little bit more and uh, this is a direct consequence of uh, the spreading of the coronavirus and fears that that might cause a short-term slowdown in one of the world's largest markets and that's china and that obviously will psychologically as well as physically in some cases hit global markets so one thing to keep in mind and which most of you probably already know that the globex futures market especially on days that china is closed for lunar year for the full week so we have a thin market as we say and what's a thin market there's less liquidity and so somebody just like any other stock you know you're trading a stock which has you know less liquidity you only trades maybe 50,000 shares instead of 50 million shares then there's going to be an outsized move uh if there are a few uh heavy sellers or even if you're trying to sell 100 shares for example in the after hours you know we know that before they'll just drop the bid boom and you'll get the crappiest price. Well, the same thing happens in futures markets. All right, so it's it's a it's a thinner market. Uh, there's a bit of a panic. There was no other negative stuff overall, aside from the coronavirus thing, which is pretty serious. But then, of course, the news media and uh, the the uh, the end of the world Armageddon type uh, uh, people uh, they're going to make it sound like okay, this is the beginning of the end. And of course, you have uh, coupled that in. Uh, with a relatively thin uh, Globex futures market with China closed for the full week for lunar year. I believe it's the year of the rat. And, um, and, you, and that's what you see. This is not the first time we've seen this. We have gone through this many times. So what we'll attempt to do here tonight is we're going to attempt to look at it on a mechanical robotic way through our charts. Uh, we're going to see where where we can drop to more, where we can bounce from, as we correctly did on Friday. I called up shots to the point, as you know, give or take a point or two. It's pretty amazing. Produced some nice gains, both on the short side and the long side. We played both sides. Don't forget that. We did the spy puts. We did the VIX calls. and uh, And then the bounce, the subsequent bounce. And now futures are down about 27 points. No, 27 and a half, you know, 27 and a half uh, handles right now. So saying all that, uh, we have a we have a very uh, pivotal week coming up. Earnings. We're going to go through the list. I'm going to pull one of my new services that I use at briefing.com. Excellent resource. And uh, we're going to. You know, we have Apple, we have Amazon, we have Facebook. I mean, it's the who's who. You know, it's the celebrity gala. Like, you know, they're all going to show up at the roast. And uh, and uh, hopefully they don't get roasted too much, right? 
Hopefully they walk out of that uh, gala, the earnings gala, uh, on both feet instead of on a stretcher, because that's certainly going to damage the market. So me being primarily on the, uh, um, uh, being a glass half full kind of guy, I do believe that uh, we are going to pass through uh, this coming five trading days through some intense volatility. So get prepared for, like I like love to say, this ain't grandpa's market, all right? And I love hey Frank, sorry to, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we can't see your screen if you're trying to show us something there. Oh, thanks for pointing out. This is this new format, and I'm not sure why that is. Uh, what do you see, the logo? We just see the participant names, that's all. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I think you forgot to share your screen. Yeah, because they changed this whole freaking format, and I was so busy this weekend, I didn't get a chance to sit and tweak around with it. I had the screen on before. Thanks for pointing that out. I'm trying to get there. Bear with me one second, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I have all that. They've completely changed the format for uh, the way. Meeting details. Last time we did this, okay, now you just see the thing. This is a uh, uh, screen, found screen, found screen. Okay, screen monitor, share. Tell me if you see the logo. Yeah, yep, we can it see shows up. All right, thanks for pointing that out. Okay, okay, John, thanks. Um, yeah. I gotta get used to this uh, completely new format that they did. You know, it's, a, it's how to operate this from my end. All right, good, good, good. Thanks for pointing that out. So, uh, what were you guys seeing before? Just a blank screen? Pretty much. It just gave the uh, meeting information, the meeting number. Um, I think that's okay. just at, at least yeah. at least it gave something. So when other people listen to it, they won't be like, "Hey, where did we land up?" All right, all right, cool. All right, sounds good. So. Um, so just to get back to my chain of thought, uh, the pivotal week is we have a monster earnings week coming up, and these are the monsters who are going to be presenting the earnings, right? So we're ready. We're ready. We're going to do the, you know, we're going to do the earnings plays. Uh, we had some big winning hits on the earnings side on uh, last week, one or two. Uh, no, actually a little bit more than that. Um, and uh, we have. Uh, and then we have to deal with this coronavirus stuff. If we get more cases of that in the U.S., the markets are going to basically take that and you know say, okay, let's let's take you know another leg down. Fundamentally, nothing changes. So what we're going to attempt to do today is to show what the extreme levels are, where what the internals, how far they can get oversold, and we're going to try try to make a determination on on what happens on a predictive basis. But get ready for serious volatility. You have to be a tactical trader in the sense you don't need to be a specialist in, uh, in uh, especially for newer members in 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 trading, individual chart. I mean, in uh, trading just chart wise, but at least you'll have an idea where we might fall to and what we might not do. But best thing to do is to have position somewhat moderate, and um, and go from there. So let's start off by. So now we get into the technical portion of the picture and let's try to explain this part as possible. So this is what we're trading off on um, last week since the 15th and what they was, was what was the well this is actually the, since the 15th of uh, of January middle of the month so this is where we were and let me screw this up it's simple i know john this is his first webinar um so obviously you know some of the technical terms and stuff might not make sense but hey uh at least Visually, you can relate to what you're looking at. So, what we basically had, uh, and I am trying to find, I don't want to mess this up. I'm trying to find that missing pointer, but if I, when I move my arrows, you guys can see it, right? So, that's fine. Yes? Okay, good. Yeah, because I, I can't seem to find the, on the on the new go to me I'll definitely fix this by, by Wednesday's webinar or we might we'll have a uh, another another one prior to Wednesday depending on market conditions uh so that I can draw things as I normally do so anyway so looking at it this is the this is the first uh uh, uh base level pivot point where we started to draw the structured charts for the second half of the month 
which is just we have just a couple of trading days just to remind everybody we have uh we have five trading days which is fantastic we have 27 28 29 30th and the 31st so i'll go with that you know five is good five is good um and five trading days you can do a lot a lot so saying all that middle of the month you know we started off around here and um very sharp move higher a little uh, 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 mini flash crash up down hit some new highs and created what I consider to be almost a short term triple top and that was up in that range of you know to, of, of around 3300 3340 uh, I thought we would get up to the upper end of the megaphone that's that pink line uh, which would be around 3243 but we didn't quite get there that's okay then came this coronavirus stuff and this is the flash crash that we dealt with we traded it very efficiently it hit each one of the and you can just i'll just leave it like that it hit each one of my red lines which are basically the major support lines tried to bounce off that fell more uh came down retested the other support lines bounced you know bounced off that uh reasonably well and uh and the markets were down i believe on friday at one point they were down 200 and something like 240 points whatever they were only down about 60 points and then the next leg of selling brought it down uh brought it down and we closed down about 170 points so saying all that this was the end of the day on friday so it mathematically and visually speaking this was a pure pattern symmetry Whichever way, slice it or dice it, inverse head and shoulders, all kinds of stuff. This is a waterfall decline, what we call an impulse decline. There was some large scale selling as stops got triggered. Please go through my um, Twitter feed for an explanation of that. And, uh, and that generally what happens on waterfall declines. It hit certain levels, tried to bounce off. Individual retail traders who are basically just trading on prices, emotionally scared retail traders emotionally scared you know even when markets are going higher we know that and uh what we call ret retail emotional traders and we are and uh bottom line is we played off the levels and look pretty good look pretty good now we are down roughly 27 points and here is where here where we are we are down here okay and we're bouncing and we're bouncing we went as low as 3552. This was my big downtrend channel. This one. We held that. We held that support on Friday. We have some moderate positions going forward on multiple selective stocks. I kept on posting, reiterating, and strongly suggesting that let's be selective there were some big winners on selected this boeing forget about it and boeing by the way had a very successful flight of their new whatever i don't even know the model 777 something very successful flight and boeing obviously bounced big time we're going to look at boeing's chart and i've showed that multiple times on my twitter feed it was a beautiful about calls at four and a half five whatever i sold it at nine literally 15 minutes later that's about 90 percent return on your money in what like 16 minutes on that massive move on that big bullish candle hit exactly the gap fill all that on the twitter feed take a look at it and we're going to look at the chart again and then the stock closed up pretty much up there so i sold those and i bought some higher strikes so don't be surprised if boeing is green tomorrow on a red market if the market opens here it's happened before it's happened before so saying all that let's stick to the uh, uh, market charts here this is the e-mini 15 minute the shortest of the shortest chart that we normally use we do use the five minutes, but I, on this format, I, I show the 15 minute chart, it gives us a slightly zoomed out view of what's going on. So this is where we are right now. Wouldn't be surprised to come back and retest at 3252 level again. Now, one of the things we do in technical analysis, which really helps us navigate treacherous roads, just like a solid GPS roadmap, okay, on an unknown uh, area, so that you don't fall over the cliff, uh, is where does this, where does this relate to so we can keep on scrolling back and things start to get smaller and smaller and smaller because we're looking at a 15 minute chart so we're going to just look show the 15 minute chart where we can bounce to this is a straight line down this is literally a 90 degree down 
when you generally have these type of waterfall declines, it's almost inevitable that within 24 to 48 hours, you will get a vicious bounce. And we were already starting to get that on Friday. It is almost inevitable because by that time, short-term internals get so technically oversold. It does not matter what virus hits where. The market has a short covering rally that again gets sold. Now, the question is that the bears will tell you and the dogmatic, you know, the U.S. economy is going to hell in a handbasket, uh, that type of uh, 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 emotional uh, thought process that seems to be the majority of what the thought process, they'll say, oh, this is the beginning of the end. That's all bullshit. Okay. Oops. Excuse me. So that's total garbage. What the market is doing is resetting very quickly. Uh, and I believe that we are not maybe necessarily hit new highs, depending. We might. We might. Uh, Boeing also has earnings uh, this coming week. And uh, I'm not counting on Boeing's earnings. Boeing's already got a favorable nod from the FAA, Federal Aviation Commission, to uh, uh, to to um that they might get early approval for the 737 MAX. That's the reason the stock shot up 10 bucks in, 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 in a couple of minutes. So anyway, so, but I'm just giving an idea that you know, big powerhouses are coming out. So when you have that, you inevitably have a bounce. And I'm gonna show you some technical factors which might cause that, which generally, I would say 80% of the time, have created a reflex bounce. So let's zoom out a little bit more. And this chart is a little bit more easy on the eye, right? We traded up this chart like a champ, last week and now this one this is a one hour chart zoomed out a little bit so here we can see what at what level did this line tonight test uh and we can make a determination we can start to work off that number now again keep in mind chinese markets are closed that will overnight create more volatility in other words, the futures will move around like you know nuts on a thin market. But in real life trading markets, during the daytime, there won't be any participation by from the Chinese market, uh, which generally opens around 9 p.m. our time, like now. So they are no longer going to be around. So this is so here's the magic. So this is the next reference point that we are working off right now. So I'm going to in 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 uh, uh, in live to show you a chart which will be presented to you guys tomorrow. So you look at the last major pivotal double-barreled bullish engulfing reversal. These are very powerful, like straight V's, and that was back on the beginning of the month. Actually, I looked at that on my iPhone earlier on. 7th of January. 7th of January. So we are going to draw that line there. That's going to be our reference point to draw the other clean lines. So that one of the first things that I would do, so anyone constructed their own charts, which I highly suggest everyone, you know, try it on their own time, is draw this as an uptrend line because that was another major reversal point, that inverse head and shoulder. Make this line a little bit thicker. And you're gonna see how this, you know, once you dress up, once you take a naked chart and you dress that chart up, all of a sudden you're like, wow, now I can really, you know, get to know that person, you know? Now I can really start to trade that chart. And that's exactly what we're doing here. And we did that very well, another one. But now that we slipped and slide it and the futures are down roughly about, you know, like I said, 27 points. This is what the lines are. This was the previous one. And um, and then this is this is the major uptrend line. We're going to draw another one. And trust me, everything that I'm drawing here is not for a coloring book school. All right. Everything that I'm doing here for us tactical traders tomorrow, the day after, it's going to make us money because each one of these lines are going to get hit. So you can make 30%, 40%. If we have a serious reversal or if you have a serious breakdown from here, you can go short on the SPY by buying SPY inputs. You can buy VIX calls or buy UVXY calls. 
generally speaking, UVX, their, uh, UVXY calls generally tend to pay a little bit better than the VIX calls. But, and they tend to have a higher implied volatility because they are a ETF of the actual, uh, actual asset, which is the volatility index. The UVXY is obviously a derived uh, product or an exchange, you know, traded fund of the VIX for the VIX to go higher, obviously. So that's the other one. And the third one that I'm going to draw is this. Beautiful. Now we're starting to see a picture here. And, um, and we're going to leave it at that because that's really where we went down tonight. Now, a uh, quick... Uh, take arrow here. So if we break down, it will not, I repeat, it not. It will not be a straight line down to 3181, in which case we would be losing 3181. Just so you guys are prepared as the market opens tomorrow, that's 71 handles, right? That's 71 handles. Oh man, I wish I had a pen here. Okay, let me try to use the brush. Okay, trying here, guys. I've got to get that pen going. Okay, 71 handles. So 71 handles means roughly 560 points on the Dow. That would constitute a massive washout. Okay, I can't do this. Just five. Am I trying to do five here? I did three. Okay, 560. I'm getting somewhere here. Like Mickey Mouse five. Anyway, that's a five. Five hundred and sixty points on the Dow. If we fall seventy one handles on the S P five hundred or the E minis. Okay, I don't think that's something that's a real black swan event. That's a really unquantifiable event. As you know the meaning of black swan, Google it. These are unquantifiable events which cannot be measured and it just suddenly happens. Nine eleven, for example, was a black swan event. You know, a sudden tweet out of Donald saying, okay, that's it. We're done with deals with China is a black swan event. So those are separate things. All right. So um, bottom line is, I don't think that happens uh, uh, right away. However, any major break of not necessarily this one, which was uh, uh, put in tonight, any major break of, and just do it visually. Don't worry about the numbers. This was the neckline break. of this big V-shaped reversal, inverse head and shoulder neckline break. It's more like around here, if you wanna go back a little bit. That's exactly where we bounced off. So this is something that all you technical traders, or at least traders learning how to trade off charts uh, when they take a position. This, this line is actually a green line because this was where the markets really took off. Back on bullish engulfing candle, like a took off, what we call a bread thrust, you know, like a big punch, like boom, takes out the resistance. See you later, comes back tested a few minutes later, and then just takes off. And so that happened on the 8th of January. On the 8th of January, we never looked back after that, even though we kept on going back and forth. That's just the way markets work. They don't, they never go up in a straight line. They never go down in a straight line. So this, this is, kind of a straight line so this is kind of uh, uh, out of the ordinary just keep that in mind normally they zigzag up and down that's just the nature of of, of uh, uh, robotic and human trading robots mostly control the market so what we did tonight and this uh, many of you new who are new to technical analysis will appreciate is we retested that exact level let me take these numbers out or you just leave it there we retested that exact level where we broke out from i hope everyone can see that very clearly so to me, it makes total sense. I've been doing this for a while, and uh, overall, I've been pretty much dead right. So this breakout level here from the 8th was retested tonight when futures were down 30-something. It doesn't mean it's going to hold. Like I said, it's a thin market. Uh, Europe's going to open up around 3, uh, uh, 4 in the morning, our time. So there's going to be some uh, 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 panic selling right off the open. They're not closed for holidays. so um, so. The market will come bounce here, and who knows? We might wake that wake, you know, with a catastrophic. Uh, it's never really. I mean, it really ha happened maybe once or twice. We opened down like 
60, 70 handles on the S&P 500. I mean, that's just like, you know, that's a little bit you know too much. But uh, I'm just saying uh, that this might happen uh, tomorrow through Tuesday during the day. So we have to be careful. And I'll be watching this very, very carefully. So that's that's the overall picture that the big, big max downside, as we call it, is 600 points down. And the markets right now would open open down tomorrow 250. So we're talking 850 points from Friday's close. Is it possible? It's a low probability event. Everyone clear on that? Yes. Okay, good. So let's move on. Let's take this out here. I really got to fix this pen issue here. Let me take this of the squiggly lines here. Because when market is volatile, your only salvation is to trade off these charts. No, you don't have to trade. Honestly speaking, when market is really volatile, just trade less. If you're sitting on a position, see where the markets are bounced from. At that point, go ahead and dollar cost average. That's one of the best ways to do it. I dollar cost average on so many stocks that you guys have seen and, and won big. I dollar cost average on Boeing and won big. You can always jump in when the stock's starting to shoot up, but they move so fast that if you're not quick, you won't be able to jump in. Instead of getting on a, a you know fast-moving train, you're going to be under the tracks. So you don't want to do that. So anyway, so this is this is this is the picture. This is the overall technical picture. There are very fast-moving patterns. I'm, I, I I said that last week. These are very fast-moving patterns. So if you don't have the time uh, or the energy, and I don't blame many people full-time jobs to do that, then just sit back. Sit back. The market ain't running away. And we're always proposing great ideas in the worst markets and making a ton of money. But you don't have to be super active. Just want to remind everybody. You can test out a little bit or just not do any trade. So, but the ones like us who basically get into the heart of battle, into the firefight, we tend to, you know, if, if we come out live, we come out with a, lot, a big bounty. All right? So that's what we do. So active traders can certainly look for a, uh, a, uh, a, a powerful day. And there have been many, many, many cases uh, where we have or had uh, these uh, big down opens, two, three, four hundred point down opens, and uh, and it's been a fantastic day. It's happened to me. Do I like it? Do I like markets opening down 300 points when I'm overall long? Absolutely not. I'm not going to bullshit you, you guys. No, I don't want to see futures down 29 points for what? So my uh, few Netflix calls and this and that. Even Boeing that I'm up nicely on, took a nice profit, moved out the strikes. I'm going to be opening down on that in the red. That's fine. That's the nature of the business. Understand? And if I have the opportunity to dollar cost average based on those levels that I showed you guys, I'm going to come out looking. Well, it doesn't matter what I look like because hey, when you write your own paychecks, you don't really care what other people think you look like, right? Because you ain't paying my bills. So the bottom line is that uh, I'm going to feel like a champ. Because one thing for sure, as tactical traders, we don't ever whimper. We don't ever put our tail behind the legs and walk away. We don't do that ever. You can slow down trading. You can attack the charts in a tough way. You can sit back and watch as things develop in the first part of the day. There's going to be fast-moving news events, obviously. We know that. Um, or you can just play a little bit of the earnings. Because earnings, some of them are going to pop like, you know, pop huge, as many have, and some of them are going to basically open down, some of them open flat, whatever the case may be, but that's going to be all through the week. Now, here's a uh, chart uh, on the uh, on the daily, um, uh, which is uh, really zooming out on the S&P. Uh, this is overall market for newer traders who, who are joining us. This is basically S&P 500 and the minis and stuff. These are, this is the overall market. This is the overall market. Uh, S&P 500 companies being the 500 of the largest companies in the United States. So they dominate, they're the highest weightings uh, on these uh, on these indices. So, and they're pretty broad based. They're fi represented 500 companies, as you know, instead of Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is represented only a, a 30 of the largest companies. So saying all that, this goes back all the way to May. It goes back to May of, uh, by covering this out, what date am I looking at? Yeah, May of 2019. Wow, that's that's a while ago. So all big, big fluctuations. This is where we are. 
I did warn you guys last week that always try to have a couple of VIX calls, UVX, UVXY calls. When I have a SPY put here and there, I think I still have some SPY puts left there. Yeah, I did tell people to buy the SPY puts, the, the Friday puts. Remember that, Z? 328. Yeah. yeah, the real cheap ones. I totally yeah. forgot. I got a bunch of them. Boo, great. Let the markets open down 27. It's going to be a lotto ticket. Uh, I do have a little bit, not as much as I'd, I'd like, because I really expected the markets to open up like five, six, seven points. Um, UVXY, the same ones like UFZ and other people. March 20 at 12 calls, which we uh, bought as low as a buck 20, which we sold as high as $2.20. So nice, uh, you know, nice uh, uh, move there on on uh, what, 20. Uh, you're talking uh, roughly 83% for a week's work. I expect it to really move higher, to be honest with you, because we all like to be greedy as options traders. 83%, come on, do something for me. Give me 180%. But anyway, it was a nice hedge because I had a bunch of them, a bunch of them. All right, so just slicing them up nicely. So I think I have a few left. Spy puts, I have that. And these are expiring on Wednesday. I mean, Monday, 4 p.m. So if the markets open that a lot uglier based on these charts, then uh, then you better take your profits on those, all right? Because there is going to be an automatic short covering bounce, which will again might get sold. So let's take a look at the broader picture. And any one of you, if you please stop me if I'm going too fast, because like I said, I, I committed myself with some great suggestions from some members to try to be you know a little bit more concise. So uh, it'll be a little bit more faster. So feel free to stop me and say, hey, listen, what's that? Or we we'll leave it for the Q and A session. So, um, so these lines are all upward trending lines. So the market's uptrend is intact, okay? This is where we are right now. I'm gonna amplify that so you can see it. This little red green dot is green, believe it or not, because it's bouncing off. There's, there's short covering going on in the Globex futures market with futures down 30 points right now. So this is where we close that. And these, this is the mid Bollinger, this Bollinger being the cloud that the market travels. In other words, the range that the market travels in. That's the mid Bollinger. This line, these line, do li lines are very important to us. The red line is the 50 day moving average, ladies and gentlemen. So that's around 3,200. Let's, let's round it up. That's around 3,200. So you're talking now that 800 points from where we closed at? 3290 yeah like 700 points is where we hit the big bad upwardly trending 50 day moving average and if that breaks crap the short out of the market for a couple of days all right because there's going to be natural outflows if the 50 day moving average breaks now we have broken the 50 day moving average a couple of times it was back on october but since we turned around on uh, since we turned around on October 10th and crossed over the 50-day moving average, we never came back and retested it. I did warn you guys that we would have uh, a pullback towards what we call mean reversion. In other words, reverting if you're traveling on on these highways and you veer too much off to the left, you're going to fall into a ditch. Or if you're you know with too uh, or too much to the right, you're going to fall into a ditch. So you want to come back to the main highways. And these are the main highways. That's the simplest way of looking at it. Don't make this overcomplicated, all right? So that's really what the markets are doing right now as we speak with features down 30 and did to a small degree on Friday. We are reverting back to the mean, the mean being the mid-level highways, the moving moving averages, okay? So so I'm, I'm, I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on this. This is a certainly a technical breakdown on the on the stochastics by now all of you know how to read this it's very simple it broke down it's moving very fast and furious so it is kind of telling me that despite a short-term bounce we might get on monday if we get a quick reflex bounce i can't count on it but i'm giving you my predictive analysis that they will hit the market again why because if this if the if the full stochastic percentage k and the percentage d here this is the short term one. If this one does not turn, if it does not turn and bounce off, first this line where it did on the last quick sell off, then it has to, technically speaking, retest the lower boundary of the relative strength index, which is always 20, right? 20, 80. 80 on the upper front 
overbought conditions, above 80, good. That means lots of internal strength. Below 20 means weak. That means buying opportunity. That's why we have selectively sold a whole bunch of stuff. Just don't keep keep that in mind. You know, listen to my videos. Listen, I didn't tell people to go out there and put all their money in on Friday and say, okay, see you later. I said, let's be selective. So this way you don't get blown out. This is how traders get blown out. Okay. So, and they don't, then they don't have the capital to build their book up. Because it's very easy to build your book up. Very easy. If you have some cash on the side. So saying all that, um, I'm going to be watching this very carefully. This is your daily chart. It's not going to be moving as quickly as uh, the 15 minute or the one hour. Any questions on this one? It's pretty clean. There, that's your maximum downside. You know, if we come down to it, 3,200 roughly. This is where we are right now. Let's do this. There. And this hold, they'll try to bounce it here. If they fail, they're going to push it down. And then, of course, you have the lower Bollinger and the 50-day moving average moving in tandem. It's a confluence. It's an important, pivotal support level. The markets for long bias traders and bulls should hold here, 3,200, 3,210, 3,211. This is your weekly chart. It is very interesting to note. Where is the stochastics on this? The stochastics on the weekly don't change that quickly because it's weekly, right? So it is now coming and retesting the upper end of the boundary around 76, right there. Nothing too dramatic here. So what it, this is telling me is that, yeah, short term, we're gonna get a thump and a, and a, and a volatility, uh, uh, a vol move as they call it on Wall Street, a volatility move. Uh, where a lot of the quant funds who are short the market tend to take their profits. That's what creates a short squeeze. Remember, shorts take profit means they are buying back what they sold short, right? Exactly. The same thing with the stock. So um, I see nothing really dramatic here. Let's take a look at the MACD. I see really nothing there yet. See that? It's still beautiful. It is starting to weaken a little bit, but nothing dramatic. So the weekly charts are pretty much overall okay. We have to monitor what happens on the one hour, 15 minute, and of course the daily chart. So looking at this thing here, we were accelerating really hard as we had correctly uh, forecasted and guided people through to stay long. Remember my favorite term, every um, based on my technical readings, okay, not my favorite term all the time, but based on my technical readings, uptrend is intact, uptrend is intact. So far, believe it or not, the uptrend is still intact, but I think there's gonna be a little bit of a slippage. And that slippage will come back and retest this broad channel that we broke out of on um, the 9th of December, came back and retested it, went higher. Each of these candles are one full trading week, five trading days. This is what we were on Friday, which technically speaking was, was not a damaging day, even though it was red. Can tell me, uh, can anyone, does anyone know why? Yes, Franco. Um, I, I was on the S and P's, E minis. That's what I'm talking about. Exactly the overall, you know, the overall what we call the real traders market. Yeah, spy, SPX, E minis. These are all the same. You know, the the core, the the core at, uh, 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 asset is root is the spies, the spiders. Then you have the SPX, which is the overall index, and then you have the second derivative, which is the E minis or the future. So they're the same. Bloodline, okay? Just so you know that. Yeah, Oscar wrote SPY, that's why. Right. So SPY, SPX, all the same thing. Uh, okay. Um, one is an index, one is an exchange-rated fund that you can trade. Remember, you can trade the SPX. You can say, oh, let me go once buy, buy one share of S&P 500. You can say, I can buy the SPYs. You can play the options on the SPX, or you can buy the E-mini futures. All right, we'll talk about it some other time. So bottom line is, everyone with me so far, before I go any further? Yes, Frank. All right, sounds good. So this acceleration channel right now has a possibility of breaking down towards this broad channel that we broke out of. This one, can I make this broader? Let me see. Yeah, I can. It shows up more. 
I've always said that from day one, all my training sessions and everything, the more visually connected you are, easier your eyes can see, the quicker they're gonna to translate to your brain. That means a better and smarter and faster you're gonna act. So always the same thing in all business, especially in our business. You have to be a visual trader. We all like to say, you know, tactical but not emotional trading. Yes, we all are stri we're all striving towards that. Because if you're not trying, that means you're losing. Is it, is it really possible to take all emotions out? No, you gotta have some emotions. You know the type of emotions I like? Like stressed as hell, and I'm saying, that's it. I'm gonna hit it hard, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna make my money back, okay? That's my emotion. I take stress, I don't look at stress as negative. I look at stress as a catalyst, as a positive stress. There's positive stress and negative stress. Negative stress is when you put your hands up and say, okay, that's it, I can't do this. And positive stress is you regroup, you set it together, you said, I'm gonna do it better, I'm gonna do it more mechanically, I'm not gonna be as emotional as, uh, as I normally am, and you're gonna see the fruits of your labor come back in dollars to you. Yep, that's just the way it works. And trust me, I know. So saying all that, and that applies to anything in business or life. So saying all that, this is the level here. We are, and it comes back to the same levels that I'm showing in the other charts, right there. 3206, 3207. So, ah, oh, man, I wish I had access to that. One second. I wish I had access to that pen that I need, you know, the drawing pen. Anyway, it would be like this. If we break that, then the mid Bollinger comes in at 3129. We'll talk about that once we, I won't talk about it till we get to the bridge. Till we cross the bridge, you know that old saying, like we'll talk, we'll, we'll talk about it when we cross the bridge. Well, by the time you cross the bridge, your account's blown up. So, uh, or that position's blown up. I'm gonna talk about it as we get closer to the bridge. How about that, okay? So this way, you, you know, we'll be prepared. But again, we are in a fundamentally strong market, high pessimism, uh, the, the bulls are scared, the bears are terrified, they're always screaming for, uh, you know, the end of the world. Um, and uh, so this is all, good fodder for these sharp upside bias that we have. There is no euphoria, I'll tell you that. There is short term, there was short term euphoria. These two days or so, wipes that out in one go. Telling you right now, been there, I know it. And read that article that I put out there earlier on today about this is no comparison uh, that uh, some uh, some of these guys, uh, sh uh, short bearish, dogmatically short bearish uh, funds and analysts talk about, oh, this is just like 1999, everyone's just throwing money at the markets, it's a dot-com bubble. Oh, really? Oh, uh, really? I don't think so. Because I don't see anybody really super excited. And it means that they're, they, they're not even in the markets. Most people are not even in the markets. We know that. Some traders, do we get excited at certain times? Yeah, I even pointed out some traders were getting a little too euphoric. You get a little bit too happy in this business, they, they're, they're gonna hit you. Just the way it works. You're always gonna be a little bit worried. Markets love to climb a wall of worry. That's, you know, that old saying. So, um, and it's true. So this is where we are. So nothing really damaging, but I do believe that we have a possibility to fall, um, you know, fall another two to 300 points after a, a possible mini bounce uh, tomorrow. We also have the, we're gonna go through that. So this is it, that's the, that's the overall picture of the market in very simplistic terms. We can look at the same chart on, the, on our um, fancy uh, think or swim uh, uh, things. And uh, this is what, uh, this is your uptrend line from, bear with me one second. This is your uptrend line from, again, uh, October, from October, when the markets really turned. Right, like I showed you on the other chart, we turned in October, we didn't look back, October of 2019, I mean. So if I draw a simple uptrend line, simple uptrend line, touching, touching the major reversal points, the ne next one was December, uh, you can see the dates here, uh, December 3rd, the next one when we had a very sharp drop was, January 7th, and this is where we are. So the uptrend line, believe it or not, is still intact. There is this line here, uh, which is basically the, it's a, this is a four hour chart, not the daily. 
So this line is actually the 200 day moving average. In this case, it's the, it's the 200, you know, four hour moving average. So let's take a look at where, what markets can do. If we, if we totally come down, we have 3181, I just showed you. This is the top. This is the breakout. Price level three. One second, guys. Why is that price level three should be white? This is your high. I'm gonna do this so you guys can totally understand price level four. I'm gonna walk you through this, what I'm doing right now. Perfect, okay? So we're not gonna go down here. I mean, that's like going down to 3,000, you know, sure anything can happen. We're gonna look to see what is realistic over the next two weeks. How about that? As we get into first week of November, let's run now to Valentine's, how about that? So I am going to do this, zoom in. Ah, if it's zoom in, it gets too flat. When it, anytime you're looking at charts and stuff, you need to start, you need to see the, you need to always zoom out a little bit. This is like, to me, it's too flat. You guys agree with me on that? So let's take a look at, why is it too flat? This is what I was looking at. And I'm gonna go back a little bit. So it's not as flat. Okay, that's better. Isn't that better, guys? To actually see levels, right? So, you guys with me so far, everyone? We're good. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. So here's your uptrend line. It's very defined, it is very defined. The more defined the lines are, in other words, the more precision touches the lines are. Remember, we're not drawing curvy lines here. Let, let the market draw curvy lines, you know, that's volatility. When we're drawing technical charting and we're doing the a GPS roadmap to navigate a difficult terrain, you want the lines to be straight up, straight down, sideways. It all has to be geometric. You can't be putting curvy, you know, uh, 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 stuff. So the patterns and stuff can be all kinds, you know, of, of curves and everything, but these lines were just doing straight out, uh, uptrend, downtrend. So here we are, 32.50, that's ex pretty much where we touched tonight. Futures are down 32 right now. So it'll probably have another touch uh, by the time, you know, we, we end this session in, 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 in a few minutes. Let's take a look at the internals. There was some heavy, heavy duty selling. This is at, this is on the 24th on Friday, right? The coronavirus attack right there. Look at these spikes. Generally speaking, and I'm sure somebody knows this answer. When you get this type of large volume spikes, this one, it was the largest since, um, since November. This is this is 1.2 million, 1.2 million contracts, big time. You can just visually see it. Look at that, right? Generally, when you get that, is it the beginning or the end of a washout? End. Looks like the end. Right. And what is the term for that? Capitulation. Thank you. They're known as capitulation washout. In other words. The baby gets thrown out with the bathwater, and so are all the dogs and cats. Maybe the wife too, I don't know. So the thing is that uh, whoever you want to throw out. Uh, so it, be it becomes an irrational moment. You know that old term saying baby with the bathwater, that means uh, whoever was washing the baby, giving the baby a bath, got it so emotionally distraught that they just threw everything out, right? I mean, you're not emotionally sane if you throw out the baby with the bathwater, right? So the real definition of baby with bath water is that uh, it, either on crack or you're doing bath salt, I'm just kidding, or um, you're like, you're definitely not thinking right. So that's generally a panic moment. So they're normally capitulation moves. And in technical terms, it's basically where the stops get triggered, um, defined margin stops by institutional clients. Retail just says, that's it, I can't take it, I'm down 50% on that options thread and I'm just out and they all sell. So these are pretty significant. In fact, this is the first time I'm seeing it since Friday because it's pretty exhausted on Friday. It's a pretty good day on Friday, actually, uh, in the green. And um, 
and then um, we had, um, even though the markets were down, so this one, uh, this one I would say is capitulation. I would say that. Now, the other thing that I look at during extreme circumstances is the McLaren oscillator. Uh, this has served me very well. The New York Stock Exchange McLaren oscillator. And uh, any of you who wants to know the real definition of it, please go to Investopedia. That's the dictionary, the worldwide dictionary of uh, uh, Wikipedia of anything to do with investing in finance. Um, and read up the definition. In simple terms, it tells you how oversold or overbought. By now, we know that we buy oversold conditions when things get cheap, when there's a bargain. If you're in the property business, um, you know, you got a distressed sale, you got a one, uh, uh, $2 million house that is a, you know, a forced seller, just like a margin buy seller, right? A forced margin. That's it. You want to send me money? That's it. I'm selling you out by 2 p.m. That's what margin selling is. And trust me, I've seen those a lot back in my old days on Wall Street. All right. And institutional margin sellouts ain't like, oh, here's 10,000, whatever. You're talking 10, 20 million clips. Boom, boom, boom. That's why sometimes when you get these big sell offs right at the end of the day between 2 3, and 3.30, you see the markets dropping really fast because that's what the margin clerks are saying. Sell, sell, sell. And then by 3.30, some natural buyers come in. They generally tend to be mutual funds or, or, or so-called smart money who start to buy in. Okay, so bottom line is because at that point there's distress selling. So it's two million dollar house sold for you know let's say four hundred thousand. You're like, fine, let's get it. Cash buyers take it. So that's a distress buy. So we might be reaching those points short term. So bottom line is uh, the New York uh, McLaren oscillator uh, measures those distress points. Now every single time it's reached a level of minus two hundred, minus two. Now it's minus two oh seven. This is real time, ladies and gentlemen. With futures down 33 and a half right now, like I said, we're going to go back and retest that level again, maybe slip lower overnight. Now that we are at 208, the last time this happened was at uh, 1 p.m. Look at the date here. 1 p.m. on, I'm sorry, 5 p.m. Well, between 1 p.m. and 5 in the morning, right? On the 3rd. And the 4th of December, the markets had a very sharp bounce overall and continued its trajectory higher for the next couple of weeks. So if we get a down open tomorrow, which technically we should, then it should set us up for a nice run up in between little swings. Nice run up because it will be such a heavy duty washout. As Paul pointed out on the last webinar, a lot of these resets happen in the Globex futures markets when the real markets are not open. You remember you mentioned that, Paul? Um, I'm not sure, but I, I believe no, that. No, remember yeah. <laughs> I was explaining resets and you said what, well, what happens is if you have one of those resets because of an extraordinary event after hours. You know, we were talking oh, yeah, about. It, yeah, it filled the gap for, for the Iran event. Yeah, right. Exactly. Or the Trump, you know, or when President Trump won, you know, markets fell like thousand points after hours that to shut down the futures market. And it basically washes out. It does the job for us from a technical level. So it looks like it's doing the job for us on a technical level right now. OK, because of reasons I explained before. So this is pretty substantial. Anytime it drops below 200, especially the four hour chart, which is the second cousin of the daily, because the daily charts right now are not reflecting the daily charts right now i don't know if they're reflecting the yeah the daily charts are actually reflecting the daily charts right now are at a minus 102 they can go lower as you can see just visually the last time we had a big sell-off three-day sell-off was uh and we turned around was the third of uh, november i'm sorry december we came down here we're almost there the four hour chart is more of a trader's friend swing swing trading stuff and any time that you drop around that 200 level is generally a buying opportunity. If it drops down to minus 331, close your eyes and buy the crap out of the market because within 24 to 48 hours, you're going to make a killing, which you'll sell. It's really as simple as that. All right, MACD and stuff right now, I, I the MACDs are obviously down. Uh, I don't really care about, I fo on extreme circumstances, I focus on the, on the McClellan oscillator and we can see what exactly is going on with that. Minus 200, we like it. Okay, 
let's take a look at uh, um, where we close that on this oscillator on a different format, as, as I'd like to show you guys on Friday. So let's put some clothes on on this chart, and it's all going to make sense. I'm, I purposely left it open like that so you can see what I do. Bollinger bands, pivot points. And again, I repeat, this is not rocket science. When people train with me and I give them the free coaching sessions or they sign up for the advanced coaching sessions, even the most of the most newbies, in fact, they are the better traders than most of the older ones, you know, who have been you know, trading for a while because their minds are full of old baggage. The newer traders, they learn faster and they apply these things and their own gut instincts and they tend to do better. That's been my experience. Uh, okay, what am I looking for here? I'm looking for the stochastics. Full. Let's put it some lipstick on this pig. Oops. What we got? Mojave. No, now we're talking. Let's put a little bit more lipstick. How about mascara? Let's put some mascara on this, all right? Uh, let's all go to Alta Beauty. Uh, one second. Area. Now we're talking. All right, great. This is a public site. That's why these dumb ads. Okay, stop seeing this ad. They ask you why do you why, why do you you know why do you want to stop this ad? Because it gives me a headache. That's why. All right. So this is how we close that on Friday. This is the most exciting part of the thing. In fact, this is super exciting. And I know you guys know the answer. People who have been with me. Why is it super exciting? Man, I wish I had the pen. Okay, it's super exciting. Because I have said it zillions of times. I've been right 100% of the time on this. And not because I'm a frigging genius, but I'm reading the markets like a frigging genius. That's why. All right? Is any time. And this is where we closed that on Friday with markets, uh, the Dow Jones down 170. We closed that minus 33.80, this with a double bottom. So today, technically speaking, if we didn't have China, like, you know, China's acting fast. I got to give them that. You know, China's acting really fast, you know, building hospitals, doing what they need to do. But China needs to wake. I mean, not I shouldn't say China, but certain parts of Chinese province need to wake up and tell themselves. And I hope nobody attacks me for being a racist, which I'm the last person I am. I'm an equal opportunity racist. How about that? I'm like a New Yorker. I hate everybody. That's why I love everybody. Right. Uh, so you got to stop eating crap. Seriously, this stuff comes from eating exotic animals. Like. You want to eat something exotic? Uh, okay, go try a Beyond Burger with some sriracha sauce on it. I don't know. I mean, serious, guys. This is what happened. And the Chinese know that too. So maybe this is a wake-up call. It came from some weird stuff that somebody was eating. And so many people have died. It's sad. I mean, I don't want to get into that. So the bottom line is, this is it's markets, futures down 34, you know, and then the Chinese markets are closed. They're poor lunar year, which is a year of the rat. They go out there to celebrate, and there are 50 million people are under lockdown. It's it's sad. And that's going to cause a crimp of China, you know, short-term economic spending in China. So that's why the markets are worried. Right? Because that'll have a ripple effect. So this is a black swan event, like an unquantifiable event that just came from nowhere. So just so you understand that. So let's talk about technicals. Let's get a calm head. Let's not throw out the baby, the water, or whatever, cat, dog, you know, out with the baby with the bath water. Okay, enough of that. Let's just look at this very quickly. We closed at minus 33.80. Generally speaking, you close around minus 40, minus 50. You want to buy with hands down. You will get a short-term pop for reasons I explained earlier. It's a given. Now, if it gets really serious, we can hit the lows like minus 79, minus 65. That's when markets are down a thousand points. Okay? So if for some reason, let's start off with the extreme. We fall those 800 points or 700 points that I explained over the next 48 hours. Let's say some uh, Apple's earnings didn't go well, blah, 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 whatever. We can, mind you. So be prepared for that. And there'll still be some green stocks on my screen. But I'm just letting you know overall market, a word of caution. We can. So we get extreme oversold, which we were on our way to doing that on Friday before futures hit minus 35 right now. It's hitting. We will most part, this will update for me. This particular chart 
will update for me at 5 p.m. tomorrow. So I won't have access to this until 5 p.m. But I will have an idea depending on market action and the retracement pullback as to where it's going to open. I have full access, like you all do, for the New York McLaren oscillator that I showed you before. That's live. This is different. This has a different reading. I've been using this for many years. And it's been dead right, especially under extreme circumstances in the market. And this is an extreme circumstance. So if we get down, bottom line, if we get down to minus 50, minus 65, slip or slide, you got to start buying. I'm not going to say heavy. That's up to you. But that generally is the point of maximum capitulation, maximum fear, maximum panic. You can't turn the TV on without them telling you that you're just going to die tomorrow um, and, uh, and whatever. And that is the time you want to, you're probably going to make the most money over a short period of time because they'll sell the first bump. That's how the systems work. So this is exciting to me because of the oversold nature of, of, the, of the condition that I'm seeing here. Uh, the second chart that I'm going to show you, uh, oh, let's take a look at this on the weekly. That's the daily. That moves fast. Let's take a look at the weekly. The weekly chart is also heading down. The weekly chart, again, hits those levels, minus 41, minus 60, minus 66, blood red on the screen, okay? You're going to be buying. You need to buy. Have to. Because that's when the most money is made. The efficacy rate of this of these charts are more than 90%. I'm telling you right now. It is. Not 90% ROI. Like 90% of the time, it works that accurately. You can make hundreds of percent on short-term bounces on multiple options. Whether they be the indices, the SPY, the, the, the QQQ primarily, and the DIA, or individual stocks, which bounce with the market. Just keep that in mind. Second is the 533 on its way on Friday, this is Friday's close, to getting oversold. We got the first negative reading on the MACD histogram. So this basically, if it follows the pattern of January of 2020, then it's gonna be the, 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 the up down type of thing for two or three days, and then it takes off. That kind of correlates with what I showed you earlier. These, if this if this thing is going to totally break down, then it will be an acceleration like that. When it's breaking down like this, the histograms, you do not want to be too big or long buyer overnight. You can trade during the day, but you don't want to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to just put in some really big money. But as long if these are starting to expand uh, 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 lower, that means regardless of any bounces, they're going to start selling it, generally speaking. But I, I'll, we'll see what happens tomorrow. This is updated intraday. So I'm going, to, you know, I'm going to post it a couple of times, just so you know. If you start to see an expansion of the MACD histograms into uh, further negative territory, that means the selling pressure is still active. Generally speaking, the real buy points are when the stochastics cross over. This has a 90 plus percent hit ratio once these signals cross. Now, generally, the signals don't cross till two or three days after the bounce starts. That's just the nature of the beast. Okay, look at that. The bounce was a hammer. That was a clean buy the crap out of the market on 3rd December. Told you guys. And then that's a beautiful hammer reversal. Perfect hammer. And then you got this thing going. Okay, this is a mixed hammer. It's known as a doji. It, the box, the body of the hammer, the body of the candle is in the middle. It's a mixed one. This was beautiful. This was great on Thursday. Friday, it was kind of bad. It was a bearish engulfing. The body of the candle is bigger than the previous day's body. So that's why it's called a bearish engulfing. But it had a small hammer. So if we didn't have a, another coronavirus thing and all this stuff going on, uh, then and China really putting more people under lockdown, they've taken some very severe measures, which is good, um, but still. Market-wise, and Chinese markets are closed too. Uh, so you have uh, this would have expanded into a nice hammer. This is getting quite oversold. We like that, but it's telling me roughly another day or so. Maybe we get turned around Tuesday. Let's see. So that's pretty much it. And I think these predictive forecasts that I put out there, I'm pretty confident that they're going to be pretty much dead right. But they're going to happen rather fast and furious. So stay calm. Stay flexible, uh, and you're going you're gonna to be fine. Now, um, let's take a look. Let me change my screens to one of my 
to Boeing. God bless Boeing, man. World's finest company. All right. So I'm trading Boeing like a mechanical. I trade Boeing literally like non-emotional of these candles. That's me. <clears throat> when you look at this chart, like I said, this should be in MoMA, okay, Museum of Modern Art. Look how defined it is. This is what we call the flight maps. Boeing Sunday turned around from $312 from, this is upwardly sloping Bollinger's. This was heavily oversold. Yes, it could have slipped a little bit more. And I even showed you guys on the finished chart that I published, uh, draw this. Where's my horizontal rate? There we go. The next level of next level of support would come in at 307.65. Worst case scenario, 302.83, right there. Because this is how we're trading Boeing. It's a very defined pattern. If I was a billion dollar hedge fund guy who called Boeing the way I did, and then this news just came out of nowhere that the FAA commissioner is feeling good about the approval of the 737 MAX, my bonus for that day would probably be at least a million. But hey, they're real decent. I wanna get there one day fast because if you have the same if you're calling the shots better than 90 percent of the so-called gurus out there who always come on bloomberg or any fox financial news or, or 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 cnbc oh boeing sucks they don't get their planes up on the ground you wouldn't have made one single dollar not one single freaking dollar you'd be keeping on trying to short boeing yeah you'd get lucky one day and most days you would get creamed Seriously. So this is a inverse head and shoulder with a defined head, left shoulder, right shoulder, neckline, breakout. Did I expect this? Of course not. But if you're prepared from a technical basis, keeping your emotions in check, luck favors the prepared mind, right? So your mind's got to be freaking prepared. Having a couple of calls, you're a little down on it. So what? Bottom line is, this was this fine. This oversold, and then boom. Now, will the stock open down tomorrow a little bit? Yes. If the futures open down 31 points, of course, Boeing going down. Will it reverse from there? Yes. Where is it going to reverse from? It's going to reverse from either 318. Worst case scenario, it's going to give back most of this candle and reverse from 313. I'm going to be buying with hands down. Boeing 777, their newest jetliner, which is the world, the engine so frigging big is the size of an airplane. Just the engine. And it flew successfully. And there's positive vibes on Boeing. And their earnings are coming up. And they're not cutting dividends. So I know the levels I'm buying it off. I'll dollar cost average, buy a few more calls. Because it hit, look at this pink line. This is a gap going all the way back. Look. See that gap? One second. See that gap? That was, that gap was created on the move up, which we traded. We're not always buying the exact lows, but we're buying the range lows. That was created at in January, on January 2nd. And guess what it did? It came back and hit exactly the gap. So what do I do like a robot? I sell my calls, which were the three, I believe I told people to buy the 320s. 330s. I can't remember. I know I know I bought it, you know, I added more. Like 320. five, 320s, yeah, because I have a series here on my other screen, a bunch of calls. I have the 325, 330s, 320s, and this was the ones I said um February 7th and then February 14th. I don't want to go February 21st on this because I want to stick to February 14th on this, on the on the long side. And uh those things jump from, yeah, those are the ones. I it moving so fast. I got in, I think my first thing was for because Boeing opened up on Friday. Boeing was actually green all day long. I mean, not all day long. What am I saying? Boeing opened down. Uh it went down after it opened up. So I got in around five and change. 
um, close to five, I think. And then it hit like eight. And I pretty much hit the top on that one. So this is a this is a very defined chart, guys. Uptrend channels, uptrending Bollinger, stochastics picking up, nice. So we shall see. So Boeing is a good chart to follow. I mean, not follow, make money on. Enough of following. Now, this is the chart that it's it's the ultimate. This is the ultimate flight map. I should send this chart to Boeing Calhoun, the CEO of Boeing. Hey, listen, you want to know what your stock's going to do here? I should just do it just for the hell of it. It's nothing wrong, right? Just send a polite email. I love your company. Oh, man, you know, I love Boeing. And uh, why don't you guys make cars? I'll buy one. You know, so turbojet cars. So, um, and then send him this chart and say, oh, by the way, before you go and ask your Wall Street analyst where your stock might be, why don't you look at this? I'm just going to do it. I'm serious. And he's going to love it. He's going to love it. He'd be like, but he's such a proper guy. And he's going to say, thank you. Thank you, Clueless 8. I said, listen, get everybody at Boeing to, uh, to, to join the service so they know where the stock is going. This chart I like a lot. This oval points are the points of pivotal interest of back and forth candle movements before the takeoff. This is your daily chart. I find this to be extremely exciting. First of all, we have nice fat volume green, you know, ex uh, green expansion in the volume. That's an old fashioned way of looking at things, but I like it. This is your slow stows, what we call the S stows. This is where the turbocharging starts with a nice right before the growl starts right in a supercar in the cold like and then it goes this is how the stocks work guys all right it's starting to cross over this is a beautiful hammer it hit the top of my over by the way i didn't draw this after the fact i drew this days ago and if you can look it up on my twitter feed so this is the points where you want to be buying the stock. Now I did that, we made money, and then the stock had two days of a bang, bang, down. So these red lines are not drawn by me. These are automatically generated by, uh, I use uh, uh, Quad, one of my platforms that uses bar chart. I call it the Algo HFT platform. Very defined, very easy on the eyes. Honestly, anybody can trade this, if you understand just the movement. No, just a candle, they were clear. So um, so this one, if we didn't have 31 points or 33 points down in the futures, would have opened up tomorrow at $12 higher or close to it. But we shall see. So where can it open up? This is the pivot line, okay? The border you want to stay above. The pivot is at 314.60. Maybe the stock opens down 6 points, 314.60. Whichever the case, these two stochastics, which are the internal generators, signal generators, the S-stock special, is telling me it's a buy on the daily. In other words, swing this baby for a bunch of days. So far, the candle structure is a clean buy. Where's the next level of major resistance? Of Obviously, the gap. That's why this is the gap. And that gap is 341. That's a lot of money from 323 to 341. But unfortunately, Maybe fortunately, because it'll give many of you who didn't get into Boeing a chance to buy it tomorrow. Okay, and I'm going to add more. Um, so that it's going to slip, slip and slide a little bit, and then it's going to complete this pattern. Once it completes this pattern to 340, which is a lot of money. When I say a lot of money from an options trading standpoint, that's about 250% ROI. Try doing that in a, in in half a day, or a day, or a day and a half in any other business. Okay, try doing that and come back and tell me, oh, we're not, you, you're in a crappy business, you know, called tactical structural trading of technical charge. I can give you 250% in two days. Okay, yeah, right. Okay, saying all that, um, that's your first pattern completion. If Boeing does get more favorable news on a faster approval of their 737 maxes, the stock will jettison to the next gap level. Because every time I've drawn this chart, that's exactly where it's went, is 351. Max, uh, short term max, uh, 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 max meaning not the max the plane, but maximum upside 360. And of course, if things work out for Boeing and actually get a definitive date, I don't think, I think it's going to happen in February when they get that definitive date. 
the stock will hit 390. Easy. And the markets will move far forward because Boeing is a big weighting on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So, guys, uh, this is. Uh, uh, let's take a look. Uh, throw in a stock or two that I can take a look at for you guys before we wrap up. Um, hi, Frank. I know I have I, I have uh, three stocks. Um, quick, quick, go ahead. I'm there. I'm here. Up. Um, and these are for long term, not option play, but just keep sure. and forget type of thing. Um, Go ahead. One is Neo. Um, the Neo, Neo, yeah, Neo. yeah, I know, I know Neo. Yeah, okay. So this is Neo's longer term chart. Okay, Neo's longer term chart is actually, you know, it's a bullish chart. It's a bullish chart. Uh, the Neo, the company itself has, has, uh, you know, they, they, of course they're in the electric car business. Neo, by the way, for people who don't know, is the is the Chinese version of Tesla. Okay. Uh, Neo, the th the only thing with Neo is that Neo really has to be very transparent with their financials. There is a lot of uh, uh, there's there's some skepticism about their actual reporting of what their numbers truly are, you know what I'm saying? But aside from that, definitely a growth stock, um, definitely a growth stock. Um, maybe somebody buys them. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm saying because after all, they're a Chinese uh, overall a, chi a a homegrown uh, Tesla hybrid uh, type of company. I am looking at the one that you want me to look at, right, Neil? Yep, exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So let's say Neo has terrific earnings. Uh, the stock will literally hit the. I mean, this stock can go. I mean, this stock can go all the way to nine bucks because there's a nice gap here uh, from uh, from a technical standpoint from March. It can fill that. Um, it can fill I, that. And, and I was following um, the calls for uh, January 2021 uh, for ten bucks. Um, they're buying it left and right. I mean, huge call. Call volume there too, which grabbed by the, my. By the way, when you, when you explain it like that, it's not ten bucks. It's a stri uh, ten strikes, right? Ten so strikes. Buying, they're, Sorry, they're not buying, ten bucks doesn't. Yeah, the strike I, is price. How is much? How much? How much are the calls? I can look it up in a second. They're cheap. Uh, I think it was like dollar seventy one. I, I can't it. recall uh, it on you, top you, of my you, head. All but. right, you, you sold me. I'm gonna post it tomorrow. I'm gonna buy it myself. And um, these are they, ja, ja, these were January twenty twenty one. You're talking a year away. Yes, yes. I love it. I love it. Those, that, those, uh, those, are, those are known as leaps, you know? Yeah. Leaps. Yeah, long-term equity emancipation calls. Uh, so basically, it means leaps. Instead of buying a stock, leaps are one of the best ways to put it for a small amount of money. You can hold this for the next year. And boy, I'm sure Neo's going to, you know, rock the boat. A year is a long time. These are not short-term. Excellent point. Are actually 72 cents so at the ask price is 72 the bid price is 70 so it's very close bid and buy now this is let me explain i know we don't want to elaborate too much till we go to the next one uh uh so this is that that's a daily chart look at the weekly chart the weekly chart is actually really pretty sexy because this one is telling me that this was the broad a broad sell off on neo so if they can meet up with their numbers and their earnings the stock will go to close to 11 that that's the reason why they're buying the 10 calls see that yeah, I like. I like um, yeah, what's 72, the next cents. 72 cents, and the option volume was 17.6k. And more okay, interestingly, Z, 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 we got the point. I love it, oh. and people will love it. So next stock. Okay. Um, yeah. G, I'm really liking the uh, support, and it seems like it's gonna head like. I like G. I told people to buy GE. I've been are... buying the crap out of it, like 30 some cents. You know, it's. A, I've made money on GE. Seven times uh, or six times, I've lost money on it four times. None of uh, twice, I really was heavy in GE. So uh, I'm with you on that. GE's earnings are next week. GE's uh, engines, turbines are the turbines that flew the 777 on Saturday morning. That's a good thing, right? So, but uh, the ones that you know, uh, the test, uh, the test flight of that huge monster, uh, Boeing's. Um, because you know it supplies a bunch of turbines uh, for 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 uh, for Boeing um, primarily and other airlines too. So this is GE's chart, and I'm going to clean it up a little bit. No, I won't clean it. I'll leave it like that. This is what I'm looking at. Here's the chart. Now GE is heavily shorted. At the same time, there's some big shot analysts who actually are liking it. With GE is a restructuring play. They gotta fix their balance sheet. They gotta show some real growth on certain fronts, and they have to divest some of their uh, BS uh, units that they have, uh, which are non-producing. Okay. So, okay. Uh, oops, somebody just burped big time. All right. Uh, must be the turbines, you know, inside them. So, bottom line is, uh, if you look at a GE from a uh, from a Fibonacci standpoint, GE honestly, 
not just not tomorrow, whatever, you know, you know, on a month, the monthly basis, maybe it, it can really go to 19 bucks. I am really looking at yeah. GE uh, on a short term basis at 1307, which is going to pay the bills very nicely. Those calls, which were at 39 cents, 40 cents, as low as 36 cents. And I kept on buying on Friday and I told people to buy it, I believe, on Thursday, too. Um, if they go to 13 bucks, uh, you will get a mm, you'll probably sell them at uh, almost two bucks, which is sweet. Um, I'm sorry, I miss. Um, I mean, I, I was probably following up. That's why I actually brought up G. But what were the exact calls again? The calls, the exact ones were February 21st, 12 calls. OK, yeah, they were pretty cheap, too. I got some of them. Uh, yeah, and they, they, when they get cheaper, you buy more because okay. this one, if it goes, it will hit $13. That's a long term, massive downtrend line. Look at that red line right there. And it hits exactly the uptrending structure. I mean, uh, parallel channel that I drew right there, right there. It also happens. You know, so this is good. This is a good looking chart. It's a at the bottom it has been established at seven yeah. uh, uh, and as low as uh, 667. I don't want to even go there. Uh, I'm looking at the stock uh, to move higher. Even if it manip manipulatively, they can drop the stock right after earnings, I'll buy more. As I have till February 21st. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, because in earnings, these, you're going to see a lot of this. Where the earnings are, you know, look at Netflix. They're a killer winner for us. They dropped it like the stock's going out of business. Then we went in, we bought it, and made out like bandits. They'll do a lot of those, I'm telling you right now. So what happens after hours, after earnings? Yes, does matter because we all want to get instant gratification, right? But you will see a lot of reversal trades, and they'll do a lot more of those this season. I'm telling you right now, and it's, it, it's already starting to happen. They'll drop it, shake out the weekends, and boom, they'll move the stock higher. If Frank, do you Go believe ahead. in the three-day rule for earnings? Yeah, and you know why the three-day rule? It's not just a three-day rule for earnings. It's a three-day rule for any stock that drops. You know why they call it the three-day rule? Give it time to determine the true direction. No, it's because of margin selling. Is margin. The, you know you know we know what the what the okay. term t, t plus three is. Okay, so three, let me explain. Three plus three days. Yeah. Right. So basically, let's say you have a stock on margin. You got thirty thousand, fifty thousand dollars stock on margin, and now you got a margin call for ten thousand bucks. If you don't come up in within three days, boom, the margin clerks sell you. So that's the old-fashioned way of looking at it. That's why it's called the three-day rule. Like wait the three days, see date. where yeah. it's settlement date, and then buy it. Now, here's the thing. It's actually T plus five. If you're a good customer, and you go and plead with the margin clerk or buy buy uh, uh, him or her a nice bottle of uh, of uh, you know uh, 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 some sort of uh, I don't know Balvenie or or or, or uh, okay. some uh, a very expensive bourbon uh, or some uh, very expensive uh, um, champagne. They might hey Frank, uh, I kind of like you uh, like your customer. I'll give them another two days. It's actually T plus five. OK, but technically, uh, according to uh, SEC rules and, and New York Stock Exchange rules and NASD rules, NASDAQ rules, it's T plus three. That's why it's called the three day rule. OK, okay. Uh, yeah. Do I believe it religiously? No. You know, do I think, you know, because nowadays they just do it just like that. But um, OK, next stock. Hey John, uh, let me ask let me yeah. ask you a question, John. Uh, so you, uh, I'm sure you've traded some stocks here and there. What's or what? What's a company that you look at? Just out of curiosity. I I know you don't have a microphone. You're gonna type in. Yes, no, maybe. Hey Frank. In the meantime, this is Oscar. Um, regarding oh, those spy puts. If uh, if we're going to be down 30 points tomorrow, you are we ask pretty how much, much? How much are they going to work? Um, well, <laughs> I, I was, <laughs> but I, but but are we selling pretty much on the open in the first hour? Like, well, just the get way, out of the, those, or the, the way I look at it is, when you get a lot of ticket, you want to cash it right away, then play the next lot. Okay, so if they yeah. open up to 200 points, uh, 200 percent higher, yeah, I tell them a lot. You know, I sell the whole lot and uh, and then I uh, then I re-enter uh, as needed because initially. But what smart way is if you have uh, you know if you have a bunch, uh, then uh, you might want to leave one or two in there. You know what I'm saying? And see see how it works because they're going to move it around real fast. The machines are going to be fast and furious. There will be an initial bounce off the open or uh, maybe initial sell off then the bounce. So in answer to your question, yeah, uh, you sell most of it. You keep a little 
uh, put a stop underneath it. So if it goes below that, they take you out, but you're still profitable. Yeah. So John answered, I, I've not done trading before. I'm getting started. Good for you, man. Good for you. Once you, you know, once we train you as a trader, um, yeah, everybody loves apples. You like eating one in the morning? Yeah, it's healthy too, especially <laughs> green apples. They're healthier than the red ones that they say, you know, at least in our business. We'll take a look at apple. I'll tell you one second. So as you all know, so John's going to join us and uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna train you to be a serious trader, okay? And uh, actually, you know what? You don't want to be a serious trader. You just want to be a smart trader who smiles. Don't expect to make money every day, but every week, if you're up a decent sum of money, you thank God, spend it with your beautiful family and go uh, have a nice drink, all right? Uh, so that's the, way, that's the way we do it here. We don't make money every single day. We certainly do in certain stocks, but overall P&L, not necessarily every single day. But um, at the end of the week, you count your things. You're like, wow. So, yeah, we can teach you the basics if you have the commitment to learn. This is one of the finest businesses in the world. Okay, so Apple. So Apple, everybody wants to look at. Apple stock has been humongous. I mean, Apple just wants to go higher and higher and higher. Apple's not going that much higher, okay? Just letting you guys know. I told you Apple was going to go to 327. I still think the stock has maximum upside to 327. Okay, that's my opinion. If it breaks over 327 fantastic earnings, which it might have, and a couple of good comments about 3G, I mean, sorry, 5G, what am I saying 3D? I'm doing 3G because of the, of the three-day rule. Um, uh, 5G, the stock will bust and move, like break everybody's head, like it'll hit 340. Not the same day, but. So Apple, um, there's a lot of skeptics on Apple. I like that. I don't like people to love Apple. I want people or these big shot guys to hate Apple so they get their faces plastered, all right? That's what I want them to do. I don't like it when everybody's happy about a stock. I like it when people are pissed off about a stock. That's when it goes up, seriously. So I want some really negative, I want Apple before, what day is Apple's earnings? Tuesday must, night. I think Tuesday after uh, hours. Yeah, I'm going to pull in the earnings screen, then we're going to close up. It's very important to look at earnings. So, yeah, so that's what I want. I want Apple to be down seven bucks before earnings. Dead serious. I don't want Apple to be up before earnings on uh, on, on uh, Tuesday. Is Apple Tuesday? I'm looking at it. Yeah, Apple Tuesday. I want Apple to be down. It'll open down. If the market's open down 32 handles on the S&Ps, uh, on the E-minis, Apple will open down four or five points. Whoopee. Love it. You do not want Apple to rush into earnings higher. They are going to kill you on the premiums. And whatever we do with Apple, we got to buy them at least one to two weeks out. Um, that's my thing. So yeah, Apple's chart is fantastic. The weekly chart is telling us that I'm looking at 327. Where can Apple fall to? It can fall on the lower end. I'm just showing it to you guys. Please read the number yourself, 307. 10 points, easy. If it breaks that, then all hell breaks loose. This is your rising, this is your trader's friend. This is the weekly, forget the weekly, let's look at the daily. The daily yellow line that Apple hugs is your 20 day moving average, right? Apple had this minor reversal hammer on uh, Friday, it means nothing. So at this point, if that 20 day is lost uh, below 318, which it lost, you know, which is pretty much there, then the next one, I'm sorry, this is your 20 day moving average, the blue one. The yellow one is your five day moving average. That's for very short term traders. So if Apple, if Apple breaks, uh, yes, the first level of contact where the uptrend is still intact is 306.47. If it breaks 306, which also happens to be a gap, if you guys can see right there, right there, it's a gap. There is the next gap on Apple, that's at 295. Now, if Apple does break, three, uh, morning people, if and it's gonna break the market too, short term. If Apple breaks 306, there is gonna be a flurry of institutional selling and hedge fund shorting. They will bring the stock down to 304. Well, that's going to happen in one minute. But then they're going to try to bring it down to the upwardly sloping 34-day moving average to 293. So if Apple falls 20 points from here, 293 to 317 is uh, 24 points, right? Yeah, 24 points. Uh, it's going to do some real damage uh, to tax. Uh, but do I think it's a high probability event? No, I think it's a low probability event. 
but I think the stock can test 306 and I would be a buyer. This is on the daily chart. Uh, on the weekly charts, if somebody wants to be thinking real long-term of Apple, there is absolutely no signs of a letdown. With, again, the support at 306. Am I clear on that? 306 to 307. Um, John Franco, next time get a mic so we can hear your lovely voice. Uh, you said that's good news for us. What's good news? If it drops to 306, sure, it's good news if you're not in it. Yeah, absolutely. But you know what's going to happen? It's going to drop to 306. It's going to go up to 308. Then it's going to smash you and go down to 300. So you have to follow the charts. <laughs> so that's just the way it works. It's never a straight line, one down, you know, um, whatever. But um, but that's good. That's good. You know, you, you'll definitely, you know, like I said, there's it, it's, it's quite a bit to learn. It's not rocket science. It's a method to the madness. And it's pretty good. What's the other stock that I like a lot, everybody? NVIDIA. You know what I did? I told people to buy the NVIDIA way out there. Like the can you hear me now? Cook. Yeah, I can hear you now. Who's that, John? This is me. All right, sir. Great hearing your voice. Great hearing your voice. Yeah. My pleasure. Okay, very good. So I told people to buy the NVIDIA. We told people to buy the NVIDIA like uh, two. What was that? NVIDIA, which ones? This one really cheap. I said, you know what? What the hell? Let's just buy uh, these 280 calls, 14 February. Let's not disappoint Valentine's, all right? 280. So I based the 280 based on this level here. You know, it's a beautiful moving chart. I still see that thing move like nicely. Those 280 calls uh, on NVIDIA, they, uh, they closed at 170. My average cost is around 180 to 190. Um, and they were up to like 250. So they were up like 40%. This is 280. That's, a, that's the 30 points higher. I think NVIDIA is going to do fantastic. I've said it before. I like this chart. The earnings are not till Feb mid-February. Enough time. And uh, the chart is just really, really, really good. And it's far from the highs. Got to keep something in mind. This is a real powerhouse. And yet, it's so far from its highs. The highs are two... One second here. The highs are 293. Mm -hmm. 293. Every one of the other stocks are like bang, 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 like going nuts. Whether it's Avago, whether it's Apple, uh, whether it's Tesla, um, Amazon's very uh, depressed. So that's that's a good one that I like. I like stocks which are still away from their 52-week highs. Uh, I like Square a lot. So Nvidia, definitely a check mark. Okay, I like it. You don't have to be a technician. They're going to deliver good numbers, in my opinion. And uh, and uh, if and, and and it's got room to move to 300. Let's take a look at Square. I used to trade Square like a monster before. I stopped trading Square for no reason other than the fact there were so many other stocks working out, okay? Square calls are cheap and they look good. And they got major upgrade from, I think, JP Morgan. Who was it? Like a powerful upgrade on this payment, PayPal and Square. I like this. Look at this chart. Forget about going to 82. Calls are dirt cheap. They're cheap. They're not dirt cheap. And I can see the stock going up to 75. That's a good 200%. ROI. There's a gap fill here. Look at that gap. Upper end of the gap is 79, 80. Look at my charts on Twitter feed. And the lower end of the gap is 70. The square calls uh, run for about $2. Uh, my average cost is two, mm, slightly less. They closed even on a crappy market at 250 after going to 284. So I'm already up 25% of my money. I'm sorry, for uh, 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 what do you call? Uh, yeah, so 50, I better make this, I always get confused. Yeah, I'm up 25% of my money. Just, just on a crappy day. So I like this one a lot. I like the chart. It's one of those early breakouts that's happening. Um, I wasn't watching it around here, but I got in here. Always remember, it's not where the stock is coming from, it's where it's going. I think it's going to 76. Now, let's go into, uh, let me see here. Let's go into Frank. earning. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. 
question um in that screen that you're at right now how do you set up the volume and everything else okay underneath? let me let me tell you one thing this is not an instructional class my friend okay, okay. i'm going to set up a time with you tomorrow because as per policy very strict policy we always spend about 15 to 20 minutes talking directly with you on the phone after okay. that you're going to set up two free coaching sessions with me that i offer to all my free trial members i'm going to teach you i'm going to show you every single aspect all this basic stuff because you're really starting off right from the bottom right yeah, right from the bottom. Perfect. That means your mind is clear, okay? So uh, so uh, remember, that's the joy of being completely starting from the top. When somebody comes to me and says, I've been trading for 15 years, they got a lot of baggage in their head. I can still help them refine their old habits and turn into good ones, bad habits are good ones, but somebody starting off fresh, I can really train them to be you know, total beasts when it comes to trading because their minds are clean. They don't have to go through that old garbage, like, oh, I lost like 900,000 bucks and, and I like <laughs> something new, you know, that's, and it yeah. stops people. Yeah, and the, yeah, and the, yeah. That's, that's what it is. You know, mental baggage is what stops people from learning something new. So yeah, we'll, I'll certainly do that for you, sir, okay? So, Thank you. Um, and, set up. and what platform do you use? Uh, well, I'm using the same software, the uh, Swim. Uh... Oh, think or swim? Perfect. Think you're, or swim, you're, yeah. you're, you're driving a supercar, all right? So that's it. So <laughs> when you're driving a supercar, you better know how to drive it or else you're going to be wrapped around, wrapped around the lamp around Route 22. So yeah. uh, exactly. All right. So Monday, January 27, that's tomorrow. That's tomorrow, guys. So what do we got here? Just let, run through this real quick, all right? Um, uh, morning, forget it. We got sprint. Well, we didn't, we didn't buy. I didn't do any uh, earnings uh, uh, for tomorrow. Ashton Brown Crane, blah, 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 FI Networks. I'm just pointing out the ones that I'll be trading. I, I'll, I'll put out as, as the basket that we do on earnings. F5, know the company well, should be good. Juniper, mixed feelings, but I'll take it. Um, Rambus, good. Uh, I don't know good or bad, but these I'm going to be looking at. I'm going to be looking at the charts. And if, they, if and charts don't always tell you about earnings. You can have the best looking chart and they can drop the stock seven bucks uh, right away and then pick it up. So, but I'm just mentioning you names. Semiconductor, Sanmina, yes. Whirlpool, yes. Whirlpool actually is a big moving stock. And, we, uh, and the next session that I'm going to do, I might do a session before Wednesday just so that everyone's prepared for earnings. When it's a $100, $200, $300 stock, they tend to have bigger IVs, right? And you can see that on Think or Swim. Like what are they expecting from a movement standpoint? If it's plus minus 15, yeah, you're going to pay a little bit more for the options, but you're going to make a lot. If it's plus minus like one or two bucks, you're like, ah, you know, it doesn't really move. If it's got a nice implied volatility, a range, especially $200 stocks, like you buy a Broadcom, a Vago, that type of thing, it'll tell you plus minus 12. So you hit the spot, boom. What was the one we hit the spot and went through the roof? Team, like, wow, yes, you know, just went through the roof, sold it like right away. Uh, and then what was the other one that, that hit the, 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 on Friday? I'm like, Intel. Here, like, Intel, yes, bang. What was the other one that hit? We had three that hit like back to back. It's on my Twitter feed. I put it out there. It was up like a Netflix. gazillion points. What? You think Netflix or? Netflix wasn't Friday. Um, I'm talking oh, about Friday. what was Friday. No, oh, American Express. Bang! Like five points. It paid like a buck for it or whatever. I can't remember. I had the 140s. Uh, literally, they were like, they were like good for 200%. Bang, sold it. And then I, and then I started buying it back as the market pulled back. So like, Netflix, I mean, uh, American Express a lot. And these are stock I generally trade during earnings. I don't get married to them. You know, but American Express numbers were really solid. So that was up six bucks. So that was pretty good. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Tuesday, I'll, these are the, uh, just as a reminder to anyone else who will be listening, these are the ones that I will be considering as my uh, earnings basket. Um, 3M, yes. HCA, yes. Lockheed Martins, yes. United Technology, yes. Now this is directly tied in with Boeing. These are all defense aircraft manufacturers. So these are gonna be big indicators of the health of the US economy as well as exports and stuff like that. Okay, after the close, AMD. Frank, are you, are, are you uh, are playing a bullish bias again? I am going to take a look at the chart. Most of them I play with the bullish bias and some of them I, yeah. Uh, if they depending, yeah, most of them with the with the with the bullish bias. In other words, if you put two dollars on the long side, you put one dollar on the short side. If I do a straddle, most of the times I'll buy some cheap calls on the front side. That's it. Okay. If it don't doesn't yeah. work, doesn't work. I don't get you know. I'm not going to cry uh, because I don't buy like a lot. I buy the basket. Uh, advanced micro, I'll certainly play that. Uh, Apple, absolutely has to be done through a straddle. So that means calls and puts. 
mostly on the call side and a little bit on the put side, just in case it goes the other way, like I explained. Um, Canadian National, I sometimes play it. eBay, I sometimes play it. Um, Maxim Integrated, another uh, 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 semiconductor company. You know, the other one that I missed and I had it on my list and I didn't play it and it was up a gazillion points, 10 points, 11 points, Teradyne. Teradyne. These guys are uh, these guys are the machineries, the, the semiconductor equipment uh, thing, Teradyne and, and, and chips too. Teradyne was huge, T-E-R. Nobody even knows of Teradyne. This is an old line company. Stock was like up $11. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I didn't have it. I, mean, I felt like crap. Okay, MicroStrategy is a very weird stock. This stock can be up 30 bucks, but the options are very weird, so I'm dubious about that. Um, let's move on, let's move on. Uh, Starbucks, I'll play it. Striker, I sometimes play it. Xilinx, Semiconductor, um, I'll, men I'll look at the chart. I'm just mentioning the ones that I'll be doing my whole scan and, and looking at the charts and then putting out, so everyone just has a regular idea. Anthem Health, love the company. What's not to love about Anthem Health? Either keep on buying it upside down, sideways. We have made money on Anthem Health so many times, you guys don't even know. Of course you know, because many of you were there. Anthem Health, it's like great. One of the most technologically advanced health insurance companies ever. Who cares if Bernie Sanders is uh, uh, running ahead of polls in Mars, okay? I don't care. And he's the one that these companies are mostly scared of. I really don't care about that. And uh, if the Anthem Health chart is looking good, I like that company a lot. Boeing, that's the big one for the week, guys, okay? So Boeing, depending on where it is on the chart, I'm going to play it. So that's how way I'm looking at it. No straddle, nothing. If Boeing drops, I buy it. If Boeing goes higher, I take the profit, move the strike side. That's it. It's really as simple as that. Boeing's in liftoff phase. In between, it's going to be up and down a couple of bucks. I showed you the chart. It's gorgeous. It's a good looking chart, swing chart. Day trading, fantastic too. Look what it did the other day. I looked at the ones on Boeing, my, you know, the 24 calls that I told some people to buy, but I really didn't have much. You know where they went? They went at the bottom of the market. When the markets were down 230 points, they were five cents. You know what they shot up to? Because there was no time premium left, right? And the stock turned around, went up 10 bucks from the bottom. They went to $6. When was the last time? That's called a real lotto. We have done like one or two of those. They went to $6 from 5 cents. That is 11,000 uh, percent, yeah, 11,000%, right? Yeah. So imagine somebody said, that's it. I'm going to buy the crap out of it at 6 cents or 5 cents. And boom. And they'll be like, God truly loves me. Doesn't matter what my boyfriend, girlfriend, dog tells me. God really loves me. Because look at this. It happens, guys. It happens. We've showed you a couple of those here and there. All right? So it happens. But anyway, uh, those are the ones expiring the same day. We call them, you know, uh, those are Friday lotos, we call them. So if they blow up, like, fine. You don't cry and go home, like, you know, crying. Uh, if they work, then great. Uh, so Bo Anthem, Boeing, this is great. Canadian Pacific, these are small movers, but they're solid companies. The Canadian Pacific, railroads and stuff, I like it. Corning, believe me, this is a nice options mover. GLW, one of the hottest stocks back in the 2000s. Okay. Um, General Dynamics, another one to look at. Another one to look at. General Electric, we already have them. If it drops, I buy it. If it, you know, I mean, if it really blows up and they say really crappy things, then that's a different story. Uh, McDonald's told you where the stock was going to go, and I got to show you guys this stock because I still swung the options. I still have some. Told you guys that Mickey D's was going to do it, and it did. Oh, I'm on the wrong chart platform. Hold on. And I hope some of you, this was your biggest winner just in the last couple of weeks. Okay, remember how many times I showed you guys this thing on the Twitter feed as well as on the webinar saying this is the type of swing chart you want to be in. Anyone comes to me and says, no, you didn't do that? I'm just going to say either you have dementia, amnesia, or you're just plain frigging liar. Okay, because I did. So instead of scrambling around, looking all over scans, paying services who give you like, oh, who's buying how many options, blah, blah, blah. That's what people do all the time. Sometimes you stick to some of these babies and have a little bit on the side. I told you guys to buy this stock here. I told you when the stock fell. I told you to buy it here. I told you this was a nice, uh, this, this would fill all the gaps. 
and it filled all the gaps, almost the second one too. Look at that. And the stock will go to 220. This is the power of a macro megaphone. Okay, look at that megaphone. Upper end of the megaphone, I'm off by one point. Imagine if you bought. Imagine if you bought. Now it's overextended right now. So what's going to happen? Oh, chip uh, market and people are not buying iPhones that much. McDonald's going to fall? McDonald's just in Beyond Meat. They're like they're, they're Beyond Meat burgers and stuff, and McDonald's is selling like hotcakes. So one gap filled. Now it didn't go up every single day, if you remember, but once it broke out and went into the, uh, oh, and it, I told you it was going to head to the gap. See these candles? This is when the institutions really step in. This is where the smart money buys. This is where I told Clueless trading traders to buy. So as it moved higher, you just keep on buying cheap, long calls. You can still buy the 220 calls going into February or March. McDonald's earnings, in my opinion, are going to be good. Very good, in my opinion. Especially with their new meatless plant-based stuff that's coming out. So imagine when I told you guys to buy this here and you said, yeah, I really like Frank's, you know, Curuse Trading's representation of this chart. I'm going to buy a swing trade at 220. This would cost you like nothing. Like say you would say that by February 220. So you'd be up 600%. And how long would it take you? One month. One month. You can make these things up. So I have to show this chart. So McDonald's is still in play. Uh, where is, uh, where is, uh, there's so many stocks we've covered, but I gotta wrap this up. Um, where is the one that I'm looking for? Where is my thing? Oh, earnings. Uh, what are we looking at? So we have McDonald's. What day was McDonald's? Is this McDonald's? Oh, General Dynamics. Yeah, MasterCard, great stock. It's going to follow the same trajectory, in my opinion, as uh, American Express. Um, uh, what day is this? Oh, this is only Wednesday. Now, big thing before I forget. I'm not going to. I'm going to leave the other half of this thing for you know for the next session. I'll probably do one on Tuesday. The Federal Reserve meeting, Wednesday. Big, big stuff. The Federal Reserve meeting on Wednesday. Let me pull it up. That will determine the fate of the short-term market, aside from earnings, aside from coronavirus, which will certainly be contained, uh, in my opinion, uh, will be determined, which will be, will be really serious. All right, because if they start indicating that they're gonna they're gonna start tightening again. See you later, market. You see those lower levels I talked about? That's exactly where we're going. So I'm going to be very wary about what they say on things. Do I think he's out to destroy the market? No. I think he's going to be conciliatory. He's going to, you know, keep going with this mini QE that he's doing. Um, and and that's big. And that's big for, you know, Wednesday. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? FOMC meeting announcement. Oh, and he's got a press conference at 2.30. Oh, boy. This is good. So they're going to try to hammer him during the press conference, and he's going to act as nerdy as possible. Hopefully, he sticks to the same lines and doesn't use any fancy word that uh, uh, most reporters don't understand. Um, so this is a very important day, guys, Wednesday. And that is the most important thing of the week, aside from all the earnings. we got GDP. This is a busy week. So it's going to be choppy. That's all I got to say. All right, guys. Um, have a great evening. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks for being here. Get the referrals in. Get people to trade these markets. Be selective. And uh, I'll do my best. Don't have to, you know, don't have to go nuts on the market, you know, even when it's up or down. Don't get too bearish. Don't get too bullish. Just stay calm and stay as robotic as possible. On that note, God bless you all. Good night. Thank you, Frank. Anytime, sir.